So welcome back to our next episode of Crusader Kings 2 when we are in a very interesting situation having just conquered the uh, the duchy of um, Franconia and we also received Aschaffenburg. So one thing I, I noticed was definitely that we're over our demands limit and that we should make that different. So we're also losing Weinsberg on succession because it will go to Ehrenfried. So our son is currently our regent and he's unlanded and I think it's definitely in his interest to already, since he's the regent, uh, grant himself a title. So the question is whether he wants to take Aschaffenburg or Worms. And uh, I think he would take the new country of Aschaffenburg for now, since he wants to be personally involved in rebuilding it up and making sure that everything works. I think in Worms and Weinsberg there's already some existing people here who take care of things. There's less action needed, so I think he will grant himself a Schaffenburg and make himself a landed lord. And our art counts is in discontent. So during a regency, the council votes on all issues, even those normally outside of its purview. I think that's for now fine, to be honest. Everybody's a very pragmatistic guy here in our council. And we have a no court physician somehow, even though we had one before. Not sure where he went. Probably he also died. So, now our son is landed. The question is, would he land one of his brothers as well to support him? I think he might or might not. Not sure. How is his relation with his brother likely? His brother is the court chaplain. I think it's not needed right now. I think in the future we will find out whether he will do that when he goes to, to to actually yeah take something so the question is would he press an interest in uh, this it's not a non-aggression pact with duchess Ida. so i'm in a non-aggression pact with him because we married one of his daughters or her daughters or something right or we have a idea to do that with my grandson break the betrothal hmm Hmm. So let's take a look at our son, since essentially we're already playing him for a little bit now. So he is fat, all right, overweight, stubborn, cynical, gluttonous, he likes to enjoy things. He's craven, doesn't really have a, an interest, I think, in this war. Um, so I think actually he wouldn't really do this. He's a bad person also, an amateur, amateur schemer, and he's a big eater. And his wife also looks the same. She's also fat, slothful, cynical, chaste, kind. Yeah. We're not looking at a very ambitious person. I think he wouldn't actually press this claim in any way, currently, at least. So let's just uh, let a little bit of time pass here. I think, unfortunately, as I said, uh, it looks like we're not going to play our king here for a very long time. He definitely will not get married in this situation. I think his son is also pretty lazy, in fact, I think maybe I overestimated his ambition to actually put things right here. So we still have these vassals here, actually, I didn't look at them in a while. He's uh, one of our chancellors as well. Ah, yes. They, they have a long tradition of being our chancellors, in fact. But uh, heir, to, heir to the Baron is his brother, I think, because the, he doesn't have any sons. Yes. And his son, he's also a bit slow, so it might be that this lineage will very quickly die out. And then uh, it might also revert to a back to us, which is also an interesting thing. And we also see that the Duke Gerald has usurped the title of Marburg. Well, that was basically, I think, an automatic mechanism. I think it automatically usurps the title once you, uh, yeah, once you have no landed title in your own Duke Duchy. Then we'll just take one. So then let's uh, take a little bit of time here to let the time run forward. So we have a decision to recruit a court physician, Worms Prospers. I'm pleased to hear that after a period of peace and screwed management, uh, the county of Worms is doing very well. People are happy and the tax collectors are reporting record intakes. Interesting. 
So what did I want to check just now? There was a recruiting of court physician. So the question is, would my son make sure of that? Because he wants to make sure that his father is being taken care of, hopefully. He's not a very diligent man, but he's not very lazy. Like, he's not really literally lazy. Um, he's just very craven and doesn't have any conflict. So I think he would administer to the best of his abilities, which might be limited, but he will find a court physician for our father. Oh, the arm, the Lolat uprising. We have here a Lolat uprising in our vicinity. So he's against our our niche lord, the king, who we might also take a look at. Are there Lollards here? Yes, there are. Interesting. So let's take a quick look at the religious map. So yeah, the Slavs are up here, but overall Catholicism is still holding strong. Here we have uh, Christian Catholics as well. And the Lollards have popped up. So I believe our, our king will take care of that after he's done he's done nothing to do the other conflicts. Why does he just not raise any any dump any vassal levies? Like it makes no sense. He just lets himself be run over. I think probably the this war will probably be the one that abdicates him, right? It's a German uprising or something. What was it here? So this here is the German revolt. And the German revolt, I think very likely, I don't know where I can actually see that specifically, what the result of this war would be if they won it. But I think it, it might actually mean that the king gets uh, must, must be abdicated. One of your scouts reports a cunning eunuch who has taken up residence in a nearby tavern. What is a cunning eunuch? What does that mean? How is he, how's he cunning? He's a physician, okay. <laughs> That's what that's about. I was, I was, I was thinking like, well, what's he up to? <laughs> I mean, cl clearly he's not doing something uh, sexual, I think. But uh, what, what's he cunning about? He's learned, learn it. That's the main thing that matters. Uh, he's a Catholic, German, lowborn. Sounds like a good candidate overall. Apparently, he's very well schooled. Has a vast knowledge of medical mixtures. An offer of gold and food could convince him. I think that's fine. Um, I think that definitely is fine. 26 year old, he can serve us for a long time. So we have now our uh, eunuch uh, court physician and he will hopefully take care of our our king while he's in this uh, condition. So the Swab Swabians, they are taking care of this hopefully by themselves, it seems like. Can we help them like in any way? Like they're not, they're not actually, or oh, we could break the non-aggression pack also, interesting. Oh, the Pope would grant us a the Duchy of Swabia because the Pope likes us and it would cause us piety. Interesting also. Um, hmm. Like, our old guy, he, he had some religious will and not, 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 but he's just out of it at this point. He's incapable, I think. He's completely uh, incapable. He cannot do much. I think that means that our son is basically ruling it. And he definitely is not very... He's a bit cynical. Craven, he wouldn't go into open conflicts, I think. So I think like we would not uh, really pursue that further. But the Lollard uprising is definitely not in our interest either. So yeah, we let it we let it go. There's one thousand five hundred troops here against five thousand. I think from the sieges they will they will go down in their numbers a little bit. Oh, he, they're getting a few more. 30, 26, not much, but hey, every bit counts, I suppose. And uh, things are going their way. Our old guy, he still holds on quite quite well. I actually don't know whether you can see your health somewhere clearly. I've been looking for that previous time or some previous time before but I don't know where to find it. Okay, we don't have a focus right now. I think that's also fine, to be honest, because we are kind of in a situation where we're not really focused on anything specifically. And we have a child who lacks focus. She's a bastard of my dynasty. My daughter, she has a bastard? That was no That is known that she's a bastard? She's here with us in Worms. So she she had some out of wedlock wedlock daughter, 
somehow. They're already married, right? Yeah. They're not just betrothed, they're already married. She had some out of wedlock daughter her husband didn't notice or something. And she just sent her, sent her here to sent her here to Worms to, to be educated and being taken care of. That is fascinating. Interesting, interesting. Uh, so yeah, I I believe then the only way really is to to send her to the religious schools and, and make sure that the church takes care of her. Maybe send her to the monastery. I think that makes the most sense uh, from my perspective. So we're hoping that the Lollards are not crossing over here to to our side. Currently, they're sieging down uh, still some areas down here in Ulm, which um, I'm I'm more than fine with for now. So we have a Conrad for Franconia faction that I didn't notice that I didn't notice. So let's see. He led it and it has been disbanded. Interesting. Ah yes, we have influenced him a little bit positively, although he really wants a seat on the council, but you're not gonna get the spy master seat, sorry guy. You're like an impaler who's not really super trustworthy from my perspective. Money has been disappearing, and I suspect Conrad. Well, you know. It's his after after all anyway, like everything here belongs to him. So I, I don't see a big issue with that. In fact, I, I would uh, recommend that he takes a bit of money. And um, yeah, I think like he can also spend a bit of the money here to build up the castle town. I think that might be something that he's interested in, build a few restaurants there, make sure that he has something to eat <laughs> when he when he strolls out of his, his, his castle in, in Leiningen. And uh, that is definitely something that would be in his interest, I believe. And let's see where we're going with this. So seeing your health, that was, oh, okay, here we are. And unfortunately, we will also end the episode here in a second, a little bit early, of course, but I want to start a fresh episode with a fresh prince, a uh, fresh uh, duke, and we will just review here quickly what his accomplishments were. So I have a new heir, of course, uh, Werner will take care of it, the, the next Werner. And Duke Werner has given up the ghost at age 65. He died comatose in bed. A skilled hunter, Werner filled his halls with exotic trophies gathered in his many expeditions to the wilderness. Unfortunately, never the white stag. So that's definitely unfortunate. We have the county of Weinsberg went to Count Ehrenfried. Interesting that it went to him after all. I was uh, thinking that perhaps it might not. Duke Conrad II... Uh, preferring to lead troops from the safety of his home, Conrad will have a hard time inspiring the troops. Long live Conrad II. So this is a very, uh, very, uh, how do you say, like pessimistic way to, to, to say it. But yeah, we'll take a look at him in, in quickly in the next episode. But just to recoup a little bit of the accomplishments of our previous prince. So we started here in the county of Worms as a lowly count and he managed to gain hold of the the other county of Weinsberg and he's administered those two for for a very long time built up the castles to an ex extraordinary level and made sure that everything is safe and secure that his his family is safe and secure in these castles that everything works really well and then in his old age he lost a little bit the ambition but he nonetheless after seeing the devastation that befalls Germany is still befalling Germany to be truth be told here uh, he managed to usurp the title of the Duke of Franconia, which our Duke Conrad now holds as well. And we're still lacking uh, Würzburg, which was taken by the by the king for personal use firstly, and then given paradoxically to the Duke of Munster. Um, that unfortunately is still missing here in our domain, and it might be an ambition for a future Duke to reunite us here together. Uh, to make sure that we have at least our de jure domains. And um, yes, he, well, he was a great person over, after all. For the longest time, he was a very zealous person, was fighting in a few holy wars. He was, of course, a skilled hunter, a very stubborn person, sticking with his with his guns, making sure that he, he gets his goals accomplished. He was never shy about getting his work done. He was very diligent. A bit brawny in, the, in his old age, definitely helped his uh, health. He was struggling for a long time in his in his deathbed after his wife uh, died and he was wounded on the battlefield he still struggled along still had a very strong will to live but eventually unfortunately of course the, the the his fate came to be and he unfortunately died he left behind four children 
the youngest of which is Albrecht, who was not yet uh, given any domains, but my older brother here, not young, still younger brother, but not quite as old brother here, uh, Ehrenfried has inherited one place, and Regina, she has married off to, to Saarbrücken. Uh, so yeah, he left a good legacy. He made sure that his children are well taken care of. There was also the inheritance crisis that the realm could split and a young king could uh, rule over Weinsberg, which would then be taken by the dukes. So he made sure that everything is in order before he passed and he left a a good play, starting point for the next uh, episode here, which we will come to a bit. So thanks for watching this slightly shorter episode, but I think it was the conclusion to a very eventful life. Thanks and see you next time. Bye-bye.